Hello and thank you for watching this video. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to perform and run a complete meta analysis with Starter. There might be better programs to run uh, meta analysis like R or CMA. However, if you start with Stator and want to stick to it, like in my case, you might want to finish it also with Stata and I'm gonna show you how to do so. I wrote a do file for you and I set up a data which I'm gonna show you. Well, assuming from the point that you're watching this video, I assume that you are quite familiar with Stata and know the basics. If not, this is definitely no problem since you can run this do file perfectly. So log using starter, the CD for change directory and import the Excel file. Well, and for the meta analysis, you need to install the with SSC install commands, which you can see over here. And I wrote like one, two, four, five, six, seven meta commands. And it's pretty easy to install them. You just need to have the rights to do so. And the, yeah, you just need to have the rights to do so. So you can look at them here and I just run them. And then I can the, just need a few seconds. And then I rename few variables. I'm gonna explain you why and show you. And let's see, let's check the data first. I wrote this data set uh, out of my mind, I have some, not any purpose or research question in it, but it's a typical two times two matrices within and from this two, two, two times two matrix, we can calculate the odds ratio, which is quite typical for meta analysis. We have here the trial, which means absolutely nothing at all. One, two, three, four, five. The author names, they are just out of my mind, doesn't mean anything. And the publication year, research, continent. So now it's gonna be more interesting. Here we have a live treatment from the treatment group, the deaths of the treatment group, a live control group and death control group. Yeah? So this is the important part. So you need, you can imagine this like um, here the following, like a two times two matrix, and then you see what I mean, okay? So let's go back to our do file over here. And then first of all, I generated few necessary variables like the total amount of treated people and total amount of control people and then i calculated also the risk ratio first so then we see over here on the right side that we generate few variables yeah if you want to look at them just type in prowse and then you get the new variables over here okay so nothing special at all let's continue and then i created few necessary uh, variables depending of course on your study or what is your research question about at all okay if you run a master thesis you should probably implement these commands or the variables just to show that you are capable of doing a complete meta analysis so from the risk ratio, I created the log variable, yeah? And then the variance and the standard error. And further until here, furthermore, I created then the odds ratio with the formula over here. Um, and then the log of the odds ratio and the standard error. Why do I put these in the logs? Well, first of all, this is quite common if you read papers about meta-analyze and second, the interpretation of the outcomes is then much easier to understand, okay? And then here I calculated also the risk difference 
with this formula over here. Okay, let's just create these variables first. And then if you want to look at them, you can either check them out over the right side into browse. And then we just create, uh, generate a few variables. If they are um, useful, I don't know yet. Well, they are useful, but since I just made up the data set, I don't know if they are good enough. Well, they are good enough anyway. So let's continue with our Dufan. And yeah, of course, here I just forgot the variance and the standard of the risk differential. Risk difference, just put them in. Okay, let's start with our first metan command. Well, first put in metan, then start with the treatment variables, and then put in the options. For my, the basics are actually, if you have the risk ratio, that's put in the risk ratio, and then a few more uh, options like author and the year of the publication, and then you can save it. And it creates also a few more variables. I'm gonna show you, just run it. And then it shows you here a new table, which I don't interpret for you because I think you might do this on your own. And then it opens up the typical forest plot. Yeah, let's just have a look at it. Um, where we have here over the risk ratio with a 95% confidence interval. And this is something, this forest plot is the most common or most useful part of the meta-analysis, yeah. You just have to do it. Okay, and then let's look over here. Then it creates a few variables like the, uh, we can here see the sample size, the effect size, which is the risk ratio. You see, it might be the same value if we check it out. So um, risk ratio is over here, okay. And then we have here the effect size, which is then, let's check it out, 0 0.92, which might be the same then. Where are we, sorry. Here, yeah. So it might be the same. So if you do it with the meta command or manual as I did, does not matter, but it's always quite good to know how to perform these. Okay, let's just continue. And then we put the, um, we generate a few more variables. The, from the odds ratio, we estimate or calculate the log and Yeah, which is here obviously the same, but we run it anyway. And then we created here these variables. Here with the metan command, I forgot to explain, this stands for lower confidence interval and upper, com upper confidence interval. Yeah, and VT stands for MH weight, which you can see here over in the table. Okay, let's continue with our do friend. Um then we go over to the meta command. Watch out, here's no n, so it's a different command with uh, where we run the log variables. And then it's important to have in options the e form and graph, and then you can just put a few options in it, like uh, the title, and then you can just save it and export it, which I'm gonna show you. So watch out, if you run this command, then the graph looks like this, yeah? And then we have a new table over here with set and p-values, which is quite nice. However, it does not create any new variables. So you have to interpret it here and then uh, you just can have a look over here, I'll show you. So meta analysis exponential form, yeah, that's because we use the e-form in the options. 
So if you explain it, then just go over the CMP value and then you can um, explain in your thesis what you did. So if you have any questions in, within Starter, you just can type in help meta, for example, and then there are so many explanations and description of this command and what you could do. For example, you can just, what I did in the options is risk ratio put in, you can also put in the odds ratio or the risk difference, which we actually calculated, so it might be easy for you to put in. And in other way, it calculates it automatically as shown before and then fixed effects and random effects so everything is possible the starter commands are without boundaries so your creation your fantasy is not set to any limit okay let's just continue and then re well i have this doubled Okay, let's just skip this part. And then we put the estimate, estimated variables from the meta command into logs, okay? So then we have them over here into logs also, because as I said, it's quite common to do so. And then you can just have an easier interpretation if you run these commands. So what I'm gonna show you now is quite interesting. If you have the meta command with the locks, yeah, I'm gonna show you. Then it opens up another table and this graph over here, yeah. So easy to understand. However, what I think and what I'm certain about, if you run this, then if you run this command, then it's automatically in fixed effects. Yeah, you can also type it in, but doesn't matter. It will be the same. I I proved that, and it must be correct. So if you want to run random effects, then you have to put in in the options the command random. Okay, let's just see the difference. And then it opens up another table and another graph. Yeah. And then you just can put in in the title summary random effects. And yeah, what is what else you have to mention in the, in the meta analysis is the value of Q. And then it gives also the formula here. Also very important. Um, let's continue continue with our do file well then meta again the same okay i don't know why so and then let's run the meta bias with the method of agar which is also quite interesting and yeah i don't talk that much about it right now because you know how to interpret it and what to do with it and then let's go over to the meta funnel which is also a quite common tool for meta analysis and very really very important and okay let's see it's red over here standard error lock effect is not found so let's see here it's uh, not not available however okay then let's just ah, okay let's just run the meta normal meta command again and then it should be yeah then it should be here actually it's i ah, okay it's gone because if you run another meta command probably it's dropped yeah that's really weird i don't know why but in any case, just run the meta with the end in the end again, and then it should appear again. Okay, and that's where we are. I don't know why, but doesn't matter at this moment. And then the meta bias should work. Yeah, now it works. Okay, it worked anyway because we were on the funnel part. I'm sorry about that. I'm not gonna do this video twice, so. 
meta funnel. Let's run it. Okay. Then the funnel appears with 95% 90 confidence limit. And then you just can type in the title whatever you want. But usually you have here on the this axis the effect size and the standard error of the log risk ratio on this side. Yeah, that's pretty common. And then furthermore, you can run the Meton influence. Yeah, which looks like this and so on. I think you got the part right now and the idea about my do file. And yeah, then you just can run also the meta compilation part and the meta trim part. Let's just run everything at once. Yeah, and then it opens up another tables and other graphs. Yeah. Yeah, here this fill funnel plot is also quite interesting. Then you can see standard of error of theta filled. Yeah, these parts are really interesting to interpret. Well, anyway, I assumed from the point that you're watching this video, you are uh, looking forward to run a meta analysis and have all your data set ready and read the papers and so on, but you don't know how to do so. So this might be an interesting pool, a tool for you to do so. You can download my do file or just hit me up on Instagram. I put it in the description box and I send it to you if you want to. And then or you just copy it from right now and then if you have any further questions, you just can send me a text message and I try to answer it. And I hope I could help you and yeah, good luck with your meta analysis.